Rockstar Games, the game developer that up to now Lorix Plane believes that as long as they launch any product, there is definitely no reason for that game to be a box office bomb. And no matter what new game Rockstar releases in the future, no matter how successful it is, the GTA series will always have a certain place in the gaming market and in the hearts of the gaming community that no other game series can replace. In the previous video, I brought you a video analyzing the plot of GTA Vice City, and if we worked on GTA Vice City, it would be a mistake if I did not continue to analyze GTA San Andreas, a game that is considered by gamers to be one of the best parts of the whole series. Okay, without further ado, let's go into the story of GTA San Andreas with Lorix playing right now guys. Let's go to the video. On the way back from the airport, CJ was arrested by a group of police, including Frank Tenpenny, Eddie, Pulaski, and Jimmy Hernandez. These are corrupt policemen from the special task force named Crash. Just killed Ralph Pendlebury, who held evidence against them. The Crash group needed someone to take the blame and it was his bad luck that CJ was chosen. Even though they were released soon after, the Crash group did not forget to say that all of CJ's activities in Los Santos will be monitored by them. CJ arrived home and met Big Smoke, one of the prominent members of the Grove Street family's gang at that time. They went to the funeral and met Sweet, Ryder, and Kendall. The Ballas gang suddenly appeared and opened fire on the Grove Street brothers. Faced with the gang's crumbling situation, CJ decided to stay and join Sweet, Big Smoke, and Ryder to rebuild the Grove Street families. CJ begins an alliance with Cesar Villalpando, the boyfriend of Kendall's younger sister and the leader of the Varios Las Aztecas gang, the Vagos Archenemy. Sweet gradually trusts CJ more and the Grove Street gang begins to regain territory from the Ballas and Vagos gangs. CJ and Sweet then defeated Kane, a prominent member of the Ballas gang, to avenge their mother's death. Realizing that it was time to regain control of Los Santos from the Ballas gang, Sweet mobilized an entire Grove Street army and came to ruthlessly fight with the Ballas gang in the Mulholland area. Right at that moment, CJ received a call from Cesar, telling him to go to Verdant Bluffs immediately. Here, CJ witnessed a shocking incident. It turned out that Ryber, Big Smoke, the Dirty Cops Crash and the Ballas Gang had colluded together, and they were also the ones who drove the car that shot and killed his mother. CJ realized Sweet had been set up and he ran full throttle to the Mulholland area. Upon arriving, CJ discovered Sweet was seriously injured. Despite Sweet telling CJ to leave him alone and go, CJ stayed arrived and completely destroyed the Ballas gang in that area. The police arrived and arrested CJ and Sweet. Sweet was taken to the hospital in prison, while CJ was taken to the Angel Pine area by the Crash Group, located outside the city of Los Santos. Crash warned CJ not to return to Los Santos to kill Big Smoke, otherwise they will have someone kill Sweet right in prison. CJ was forced by Crash to be their henchman, eliminating anyone who intended to denounce them. At this time, CJ also met Caesar's cousin Catalina. The two then did some small missions together. In Los Santos, the Grove Street Families Gang and Varios Las Aztecas both disbanded. All areas in the city are now in the hands of the Ballas and Vagos gangs. CJ participates in several street races with Wu Zi Mu, the leader of the triad in San Fierro City. He beat him and Catalina's boyfriend, Claude, who was the main character in GTA 3. Thanks to that, CJ got a car from a repair shop in San Fierro City. Following the Ballas group's car, Cesar and CJ discovered that Loco Syndicate was the drug dealer for Big Smoke, Ryder, as well as the Ballas and Vagos gangs. CJ decides to destroy the Loco Syndicate gang to eliminate the source of drugs into Los Santos City and also kill Ryder. CJ then cooperated with the Triads, helping them overthrow the Vietnamese gang, the Da Nang Boys. CJ suddenly received a mysterious call, asking him to go to a farm in Tierra Rabada. Arriving there, Carl realized that it was Terena, the boss of the Loco Syndicate, whom he thought he had killed a long time ago. Terena revealed that Sweet was being held in an upstate prison, and if he wanted Sweet to be released from prison early, CJ had to work for him. At the same time, Dirty Cop Tenpenny appeared again and asked CJ to kill an FBI agent and recover a file. CJ completed the task and handed over the files to Tenpenny and he suddenly knocked Hernandez unconscious. It turned out that Hernandez had reported to Tenpenny's superiors about his dirty dealings. Tenpenny drove away and ordered Pulaski to kill CJ to cover up the clues. Right before Pulaski could shoot CJ, Hernandez woke up and rushed at Pulaski, who was shot and killed instantly. CJ chased Pulaski and finished him off. 
Terena returned and asked CJ to steal a jet and use it to destroy a fleet of spy ships. CJ completed the mission, and Terena kept his promise to release Sweet. Together with Sweet, CJ returned to the city of Los Santos and took back the Grove Street neighborhood. The Grove Street gang was re-established and the CJ brothers launched a general attack on the Balas and Vagos gangs. The whole city of Los Santos is plunged into chaos of gang wars. After helping Cesar reclaim the area from the Vagos gang, CJ and Sweet headed to Big Smoke's drug den and destroyed him. Big Smoke while dying revealed to CJ that he betrayed the Grove Street gang just for money and power. Tenpenny appeared and asked CJ to take all the money from Big Smoke's safe and give it to him. Tenpenny fled on a fire truck, CJ and Sweet chased after him and caught up with him when they reached the bridge over Grove Street. The fire truck jumped off the bridge and crashed straight onto Grove Street. Tenpenny got out of the car but quickly collapsed because his injuries were too severe. Tenpenny died, justice had been served in Los Santos. Sweet, CJ, Cesar, and Kendall threw a party to celebrate. The violence outside gradually ended. The Grove Street family's gang took complete control of Los Santos. That is also the entire plot of GTA San Andreas. However, there are still many things that are still unclear, right? The Grove Street gang used to be very powerful before CJ left, so during the time CJ left, what happened that caused the Grove Street gang to be overtaken by Balas and Vagos? The Grove Street gang's previous operating principle is never to be involved in drugs. However, the meth crisis in the 80s and 90s caused meth to flood the United States. Two rival gangs, Balas and Vagos, took advantage of this opportunity and established drug rings throughout Los Santos. Standing outside the drug spiral, the Groove Street gang's power is increasingly weakened. The key members of the gang who were not killed also left. Finally, the question that many of us also wonder, why doesn't CJ appear in GTA 4 and GTA 5? According to Rockstar, GTA 3, GTA Vice City, GTA San Andreas, GTA, Liberty City Stories and GTA Vice City Stories are all in a world called 3D Universe. GTA 4 and GTA 5 are located in another world, HD Universe. The two worlds 3D and HD are completely different and have nothing to do with each other. CJ does not appear in GTA 5 simply because CJ does not exist in the world of GTA 5. So the video where you see someone finding CJ's grave in GTA 5 is fake, it's just a mod created by fans. The setting of GTA San Andreas is located in San Andreas, a fictional state located on the west coast of the United States, which was inspired by the states of California and Nevada. There are three major cities here, Los Santos, based on Los Angeles, San Fierro, based on San Francisco and Las Venturas, based on Las Vegas. Set in the 90s, the game follows CJ, Carl Johnson, a young man who lived in Liberty City for five years, returns to his hometown of Los Santos to rebuild the Grove Street Gang on the brink of collapse. If GTA Vice City is based on real events in Miami in the 80s, then with GTA San Andreas, the game's plot is also inspired by shocking events that happened in Los Angeles in the past 90s. First of all, we must mention the war for territory between the two most notorious gangs in Los Angeles at that time, the Bloods Gang and the Crips Gang. These are two gangster gangs that are almost the bosses of the criminal network in the black community in America. Both have a very large number of members, both around tens of thousands of members. The main area of operation of both gangs is Los Angeles, so there is a long-standing feud between Bloods and Crips. Countless bloody gunfights took place between the two gangs in the 90s. The conflict between the Bloods and Crips gangs is also the prototype that created the two gangs in GTA San Andreas, Grove Street Families and Ballas. Next was the drug crisis in the late 80s and early 90s, which flooded American cities with drugs. This is considered the most chaotic time in contemporary American society in general and the city of Los Angeles in particular. Crime rates increased rapidly and violence occurred everywhere, culminating in the riots right in the heart of Los Angeles in 1992. On April 29, 1992, a court acquitted four police officers. A video shows these police officers beating Rodney King, an African American. Thousands of people protested the court's decision and riots broke out across Los Angeles within six days. Robbery, attacks, arson, and murder were widespread everywhere, leaving 53 people dead and more than 2,000 injured. Finally, there is the Rampart Police Station scandal, part of the Los Angeles City Police Department. In the late 90s, the Rampart Station's crash force was established to suppress gangs. Party in the city. However, this force has degenerated when it is involved in a series of abuses of power, violence, drug possession, bank robberies, and creating false evidence. This is considered one of the biggest police scandals in American history. The final boss of GTA San Andreas, Tenpenny, is based on police officer Rafael Perez, the mastermind behind the Rampart scandal.
Okay, so above are all the things related to the plot and some side information of GTA San Andreas that Lorix Plane has compiled and brought to you. And even though it has been released for 16 years, GTA San Andreas has never been forgotten and is still a legendary game in the hearts of fans. If you find this video interesting and useful, don't forget to like share and subscribe to Lorix Plane channel. And if you want us to further analyze the plot of any game, don't hesitate to leave a comment to let us know. For now, goodbye and see you in the next videos.